Hello everyone, welcome back to Spoiled Rotten Beads. I am Juliet and I've got a very cute little project for you today. It is these lovely little flower pendants like the one that I'm wearing. They were designed for us by the French designer Puka and they use Amos beads and a sparkling little crystal in the middle. Let me just grab one for you and show you it nice up close. There you go. So they do look like a little flower. I think they'd make a really lovely earring as well because they're a nice size. They're not too big for an earring um, or even a ring. I think that would work really well. So hopefully you can have lots of fun playing with this design. I will pop links to the free downloads on this video as well. I'll pop some bundles on the website as well to make it easy to choose colors. And uh, it's nice and easy. One thing I will say is do hit that subscribe button if you're watching us on YouTube or hit the bell if you're watching us on Facebook so that you get notified next time we upload a video or next time we do a live. I am super excited today and I have to say a big thank you to you all for subscribing to our YouTube channel because we have just hit 60,000 subscribers on YouTube which is awesome. I am blown away so thank you so much for all of your support. It really does make my day when I see those subscriptions um, going up and I see our numbers going up so thank you very much and so glad to see that you're all enjoying our video tutorials. Um, so I think that's enough of me wittering on. I just want to get on with this really and show you guys how to make these lovely little flower charms. So I'm going to show you how to make these cute little flower charm that was designed for us by Puka. It uses the Amos Parpuka beads for the petals of the flower and then you just need some size 15s and some size 11 seed beads and then you'll need a crystal to go in the centre um, now, Puka specifies a 6mm crystal, but we've actually used a 7mm SS34 Preciosa flatback crystal um, in our lovely flowers, and it's worked really well. I will just talk to you a little bit about a variation on the pattern um, when we when we get to the point of add, adding the, um, the crystal in and just talk to you about what you can do um, in terms of a variation there. But it's really lovely and easy to make this flower. It, it looks so cute just hard on a simple chain like this lovely pistachio one here um, but I think you could make it into a ring you could use it as a charm for a bracelet you could use it as earrings because it's a nice size if I just put it on my fingers there you see it's not too big so it would make a really pretty earring on its own um, we've just finished it with a jump ring and a lovely little um, silver plated uh, cable chain necklace really lovely and easy to do if you've got a craft stall or if you've got an Etsy shop then I think these would go down really well because they're lovely and delicate they don't take you an awful lot of time or expensive materials to make and um, you can really have fun playing with the colours as well so um, I'm just going to pop this to one side and um, grab my pattern so you'll find a free downloadable pattern over on the Spoiled Rotten Beads website that you can just click on and download, add to your basket and download it and um, you will have an instant access to it. You do, you can order a printed copy as well if you like and we'll happily send you one in the post. Here's some of the lovely colour ways that um, Puka has used. You'll find the Amos beads on the website in lots and lots of different colours so you really can, um, you know, just personalise these and make them any colour way you like. So you're going to need seven Amos beads and you're going to start off with your Amos beads and your size 11 seed beads and I've chosen to match my size 11 seed beads to the colour of my Amos beads so I'm using the opaque Kiriko Amos beads um, along with one of my new favourite colours a Miyuki seed bead in frosted opaque glazed rainbow nebula works really really well with the Kiriko this one here I've used the opaque pistachio amos beads and um, again i've used one of the frosted opaque glazed seed beads i've used frosted opaque um glazed olive um, and that works really really well it kind of just almost matches those um, amos beads exactly so it's lovely when you find a little match made in heaven like that um, now i'm using size 10 beading needle and i've just beaded my needle threaded my needle up with a sort of about about 70 centimeters of beading thread you can use fire line or you could use jura thread any beading thread will work with this and to begin with you need to thread on seven of your amos beads and seven of your size 11 seed beads so i'm going to start off with a size 11 seed bead and then an amos bead 
And if I just turn the AMOS bead over on its side, you'll see, if I just zoom my camera in, you'll see it's got two holes, one there and one there. And we're going to be using the one at the bottom here that's on the tip of the AMOS bead to begin with. Let me just zoom back out again. There we go. So you're going to be using the, the hole that's closest to the pointed tip of the AMOS bead. And you want to thread on a total of seven seed beads and seven AMOS beads. So I'm going to bead away here adding on my amos and my seed beads when you finish doing this you're going to pull them around into a circle and tie a um, nice secure double knot and pull that knot inside a bead so let me just line these up okay you can see just how well this colour matches, doesn't it? It really does work really nicely. So I've got seven seed beads and seven Amos beads. And um, I'm just going to take my tail of thread and pass it under my working thread and tie knot. And it already looks like a flower. I want to make sure that this knot is really nice and secure because this is going to hold the whole piece together. So I am tying a double knot again on top of that first knot. Pulling nice and tight. And now what I'm going to do is stitch through the seed bead and the Amos bead and then the next seed bead. And that's going to pull that knot inside those beads. And then once again, I can just pull it tight, make sure I'm really happy that that is nice and secure. And now we're going to use our size 15 seed bead. So I've got this um, just a lovely metallic silver here. And um, I'm coming out of a size 11 seed bead. And I'm going to pick up three size 15 seed beads. And then I'm going to stitch back through that size 11 seed bead that I am currently exiting. So you see I'm exiting here, picked up my 315s and I'm going back through that same seed bead. And you'll find, if I just zoom in again, there you go, you end up with a little kind of a pico of three size 15s, which you can bring up so they're sitting on top of that size 11, like so. And you want to do that all the way around the circle now. So I'm going to stitch through the next Amos bead and the next size 11 seed bead and repeat that again. And I'm pulling my work nice and tight as I go. I want them all to stay on the same side. It doesn't kind of matter. You can sort them out um, later on if the if the little picots um, sit on the wrong, so don't, so don't all sit on the same side. But um, ideally, you want them all to sit on the same side of your piece. It doesn't matter which side, as long as they all sit on the same side. So I've picked up my three fifteens, going back through that same size 11 seed bead and then through the Amos bead and the next size 11 seed bead. You, if you're clever, you may be able to do that all at once, like so. Let me zoom back out again. There we go. And I'm just gonna bring these up so that they sit on the same side as the first ones. So you can see there's my two little sets of size 15s there sitting on top of the size 11s. So I'm going to go all the way around the circle and add in those size 15s and then I'm going to come back to you when I've done that. When you've gone all the way around you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this. So it looks a little bit wonky at the moment but it's all about to come together. Um, my thread is currently exiting from this 
size 11 down here. And this is my last set of three size 15s. And I'm gonna step up through those three 50, through the, the three, two of those three 15s. Let me just zoom in again for you guys so you can see. So these are the last three 15s that I added and I'm going back through the first two of those there. So I'm coming out of, effectively coming out of the middle one. And now I'm going to pick up a size 11 and go through the next middle bead on the next set of three size 15s. And this is what's going to form the bezel that's going to grip this crystal in place in just a minute. So I picked up another size 11 and I'm going through the middle size 15 in the next set of three. I'm not pulling too tight at the moment, I'm just going through, okay, I'm going to work my way around the circle. I'm not worrying about it being too tight right now because I want to just leave room to slip my crystal in in just a minute before I just tighten it all up. So before I go any further, I'm going to pop this crystal in now. So there we go. Pop them in there. Make sure that those seed beads are sticking out the other side of it. This is why you want to leave a bit of room at this stage so that you can have a little fiddle around to make sure that everything fits nicely you don't want to pull it too tight it's just a bit of a fidget getting that crystal in you may find using a little pair of pliers to hold the crystal makes it a little bit easier there you go that's a bit easier so you can see that going in there i've still managed to trap those seed beads under there but i will grab those in just a sec so i'm picking up another 11 and just gonna winkle out those size fifteens from underneath there. So she whilst holding that crystal in place or trying to. I'm making this look hard now, aren't I? T trust me it isn't. It's just hard when you're trying to video it at the same time. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Now it's in. Uh, so now I just want to add in my last size 11 and go through the next 15 and the next 11. And pull tight. So this is the point at which I'm going to pull everything nice and tight so that I grip that crystal in place. Okay, let me just zoom back out again. And what I'm going to do now is go back around the circle, just pulling everything nice and tight as I go. But this is where I want to talk to you about possible variations in this pattern. So Puka has used 15s to create this the little pico edge there um, that we're using to create the bezel. I think you could also use two 15s and one 11. So Basically, the middle bead could be an 11 and that would work just as well. And it, if you're a loose beader um, or you're really worried about seeing any thread in your design, then you may prefer that. Um, so just working my way around, just tightening everything up as I go, pulling it nice and tight there's my crystal nice and secure. So what I'm talking about is these silver beads here, which are 15s, you could do those as size 11s if you wanted to. So you've got that little set of three here. You could go 15, 11, 15, and that would tighten up nicely as well. Um, and it would, might stop you from having any thread. I'm just having a little look at this little Pico here because it's not sitting quite how I want it to, so I may have to work back 
I may have gone through the wrong bead there. So if I have, that you see he's sticking out. Um, I think I've probably gone through the wrong bead. I've not gone through the middle bead like I was supposed to. So that, there you can see, I've gone wrong. So to, to put that right, to fix that, I can just slip my needle off and um, I'm just going to retrace my shape, steps and go back to that and make sure I go through the correct bead there. Um, and then I'm going to come back to you when I've done that and show you the next stage of creating these cute little flowers there. So I've worked my way back around and sorted that little problem out. I had indeed gone through my middle size 15 um, from the wrong direction and that is what caused it not to sit correctly. So I just worked my way back and now I'm pulled it all tight and um, it's looking really pretty, I'm really pleased. I like this colorway. Um, so what I want to do now is just finish the piece off by adding in the size 11s that sit um, around the petals there through those top holes on the um, on the Amos beads. I'm just going to snip off my tail of thread because it's just annoying me now. It's getting in my way and I don't need it there anymore. There we go. Um, so where am I coming out of? So I am coming out of this middle size 15 here. So I'm going to stitch down through the next 15. And then through the bottom hole in that Amos bead and through the top hole in that Amos bead. And that's going to switch direction around the circle. And of course, each time you switch direction around the circle, it helps to tighten things up. I've picked up a size 11 and I'm going through the empty hole in the next Amos bead. And I'm just going to go around that circle six more times adding in those size 11s now i've chosen a size 11 that that perfectly matches my amos beads you could choose a contrasting color and um, that would look really pretty too you'd get like more of a pop it would sort of pop rather than fade into the background um so um if you probably got some seed beads in your stash if you're a seed beader that you could do this with. I do love these new uh, rainbow matte AB shades from um, from from Miyuki. Anyway so there you go so I'm now all the way around and I'm coming out of my very first size 11 that I added in this round and just to make sure that I can get my jump ring on nice and easily I'm just going to stitch a size 11 bead on top of this one and that's going to allow me to add this teeny tiny little four millimeter open jump ring here so let me just zoom in so you can get a good look at these pieces I'm going to pick up a size 11 and then just go back through the size 11 that I am currently exiting. Mm -hmm. This is when you wish you didn't be quite with such quite such a tight tension. You can't get back through things, but uh, it's a bit of a fidget. But there you go. I'm through. I'm going back through the Amos bead as well. So that little size 11 now is going to sit on top there. And that's going to allow me to add the jump ring on. So I just need to finish off my thread now. So I'm just going to stitch between a couple of beads to create a loop. Go through that loop and pull tight. And do that a couple more times. Pulling everything nice and tight as I go. There we go. Tying, these are called half hitch knots, so I'm just tying some half hitch knots there. Let me zoom back out again. There we go. So, I'll tie another knot on top of that one there. I do it a few times, and that just makes it really nice and secure. Pulling those knots each time inside the next bead. This is going to be my last one here. There we go. Happy that it's nice and secure. Pull it inside a bead and then I'm going to use my scissors just to trim off my tail of thread. 
So I just need to use my chain nose pliers to attach my little jump ring there to that seed bead that I added on. And I'm just going to close up that jump ring. There we go. There you have it. There is my cute little flower charm from the Pattern by Puka. It's really pretty, really easy to make, and um, I think very effective as well. I think these make a lovely pair of earrings, but I do like it as a pendant too. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, please do head over to the website to download the free pattern. Make sure you leave your comments and share all your makes on our Facebook page and our Facebook group, Spoil Rotten Beaders. And um, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out next time we do an upload. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.